Hey guys, Charles Jager for Tuts Plus. Today I'm going to be talking about an introduction to quadcopters, also known as drones or UAVs. In today's lesson, I'm going to be referring to them as drones, mainly because it's the most popular terminology out right now. Today we're going to be covering, are drones right for your project? We're also going to look at some general information you may need to know about drones. And finally, we're going to follow up with some good practices. Alright guys, let's get to it. Are drones right for your project? Well, it starts with the obvious question, do you have to have aerial video or photography for your project? If the answer is yes, then drones would be a great choice. It's a very low cost and effective method of getting aerial shots. It's great for short films, promotional videos, real estate. And it's like I said, it's very cost effective. There is a learning curve with them, but after 10 or so flights, you should have enough basic coordination to get the shots you need. Just remember to stay within your means and don't do anything that you're unsure about. There are other shots of drones you can achieve that you might not have considered. They're a great substitute for jib shots or long dolly shots. Some pros using a drone instead of a jib would be the amount of equipment you have to haul, and a heavier jib usually requires about two or more people to set up. Smaller drones can be carried in just a small backpack or case, which make them optimal for jib shots you need in a remote location. They also typically just require one person to use, and setup is pretty minimal. And some pros using a drone instead of a dolly is obviously you don't have to set up a very long track in order to achieve your dolly shot. And since the drone is in the air, you don't have to worry about the rough terrain. Now there's some other cases where drones might not be the best choice for your project. Weddings are a good example. They might be great for getting aerial shots of the bride and groom before the service, but I would never expect to see one flying around during the service, unlike one of the DJI promotional video shows. The fact is, they're just too loud and distracting for a scenario like that. I don't care how expensive a wedding it is or how great the bride and groom look, everybody's going to be looking at the drone buzzing above their heads. Anything with dialogue will also obviously pose a problem because of the humming from the drone. A lot of drones don't even record audio because of this. But that's something that's pretty obvious and I would expect most people to record the audio separate anyway or to do audio dubbing after the fact. Drones also obviously put out a fair amount of wind, which most of which will be directly below the drone. So obviously if you're going to fly the drone above somebody, which I don't really recommend for safety reasons, just know that it is going to put out a fair amount of wind, it'll scare away animals, and it's also going to stir up a lot of dust. Flying drones indoors is also kind of a gray area. Unless you have over 100 flights or more and very experienced, I wouldn't recommend doing this, and even then, it's still really dangerous. Now, some newer drones, like the Phantom 3 or the Inspire 1, they come with a vision positioning camera underneath the drone that helps keep it steady when it's close to the ground, even when it doesn't have a GPS signal. This makes it a lot easier if you are having to film indoors. However, I still wouldn't recommend flying anything smaller than a large maintenance garage or a warehouse, mainly because things can just go wrong really quickly. All right guys, now we're gonna move on to some more general information about drones. Here I'm gonna to try to provide you with some technical details and other things that are good to know before buying your first drone. I'm primarily gonna be focusing on the Phantom 3 and the DJI Phantom 2 with the H3 3D gimbal because I expect these two models to be the most popular among amateur drone users. I'll compare and contrast a lot of differences between the two. All right guys, I'm gonna start off with one of the most asked questions which is flight time per battery. This is typically gonna be about 10 to 13 minutes. Now both drones claim higher times on their specs, anywhere from 20 to 23 minutes. However, that's if you drain the battery completely, and that typically isn't recommended to prolong the life of your battery. It's a pretty common practice to begin to land your drone with about 40 to 35% power left on your battery. This is because it prolongs the life of the LiPo batteries, and also if something goes wrong, you don't have to land your drone immediately. Which brings up the next point about batteries, they do have a shelf life. Eventually they'll bloat up and expire. This doesn't mean your drone's gonna fall from the sky, but it does mean that they're gonna expand and eventually you're gonna to have to dispose of them properly. With proper maintenance, which actually recommends you drain the battery fully about every 15 flights, and by storing the batteries with about 50% charge, you can probably expect the battery to last about one to two years or 200 flights. Some may last longer than that, others may not. They retail for roughly about $150 to $200. Next is the FPV transmitter type. That stands for first person view. I knew nothing about first person view transmitters before I got into drones. Depending on which drone you choose, you have different methods of observing the footage on your controller. There are two main types, digital antenna and Wi-Fi signal. Digital antenna is definitely the less superior of the two and is primarily going to be used with a Phantom 2 and a GoPro camera. In my opinion, this method of observation is getting outdated unless you specifically need to observe footage from a GoPro camera. The major disadvantages with this setup are the SD signal, which usually has quite a bit of static, but is still quite manageable. The range is also quite short, typically cutting out around 400 to 600 meters away. One advantage is they're simple to use once they're installed and you can just turn it on and start using it. They have a matte screen which is a bit easier to see in bright daylight. These systems are third party FPV kits that you can typically buy and install yourself or buy pre-installed from a new Phantom 2. They usually run in the range of about $500 to $600. 
Also, just as a side note, I don't recommend using the GoPro Wi-Fi app as a method of viewing your footage from your GoPro that's on your drone because it's been claimed that the signal can interfere with the controller signal and cause malfunctions. I've heard pros and cons from both sides, but DJI doesn't recommend it. A much better solution are Wi-Fi transmitter types, such as those on the DJI Inspire or the Phantom 3. This sends a wireless signal from the drone to a device you have mounted on the controller, like a tablet or a smartphone. It works through the DJI Pilot app, which also gives you real-time feedback on the status of your drone and can selectively record or take photos, opposed to the Phantom 2, which pretty much has to record the entire flight. The DJI Vision Plus also works through a similar app. However, it's got less features and the camera system on the Vision Plus, in my opinion, is limiting. And the clarity isn't up to par with the Phantom 3 or the GoPro cameras. Now we can move on to the lens specs of these two drones, which basically, depending on your project's needs, is gonna determine which drone you may use. The Phantom 3 and Inspire 1 both have a 20 millimeter equivalent camera mounted, which is not gonna have the fisheye distortion that a GoPro is gonna have. GoPro has more wide angle view options, as well as options to crop in to a medium or narrow view. However, in my experience, the quality drops off quite a bit the more you crop in. It's probably better to shoot in wide 4K mode and then crop in to suit your needs in post. Now, which has better camera performance? It might come as a shock, but I actually believe the GoPro Hero 4 Black actually has better image quality and dynamic range than the Phantom 3 or the Inspire 1. But again, it depends on your needs. But if you think about it, this kind of makes sense because GoPro's been focused on cameras and image quality, whereas DJI is just getting into the camera game. This doesn't mean the DJI cameras are bad, and I actually use the DJI cameras more because I like the 20 millimeter look. However, the footage suffers greatly from moray issues unless you really dial down the sharpness, after which the footage can look a bit smudgy. However, if you're filming in 4K and downscaling to 1080p, you can get some quality results. I just make sure you always film in 4K if you're filming on the Phantom 3 or the Inspire 1. The GoPro is a bit of a hassle filming in 4K because the codec isn't as friendly, but filming in 4K and outputting to 1080p is great, and the 4K works wonders at retaining the image quality when you need to counteract the lens distortion in post. You're also gonna need to purchase a lens hood for your GoPro, which is gonna help eliminate a lot of the strobing effects you can get when you're using the Phantom in sunlight. I also wouldn't recommend any GoPro models below the Hero 3 Plus or the Hero 4 Black or Silver. The reason is that these models allow you to mainly adjust more options like the ISO and exposure. These options are what allows the GoPro dynamic range to shine. Otherwise, you get footage with a lot of blown out skies, and that's not very cinematic. The next thing you're going to need is a travel case. Without a travel case, you're going to have a lot of small pieces to maintain and keep up with, and it's just going to be a huge pain. It's just a smart move to invest in a quality case, and if you have to travel or move, obviously the drone's already packed up and ready to go. Most of these are gonna run about $250 to $500 price range, comparable to a good Pelican case. They also have some cool travel backpacks that are great for transporting a drone on hikes. My personal recommendation if you're looking at a starter drone is actually gonna be the Phantom 3. I feel like it's pretty well-rounded and it's gonna be a lot more user-friendly than previous models that don't take advantage of the Wi-Fi transmission or the DJI Pilot app. All right guys, now we're gonna move on to some good practices you can use when you get your first drone. My first recommendation would be to use some sort of prop guards like this for the Phantom. It's really not a matter of if you're gonna crash, but when. It's just part of the learning curve and learning the limits of the drone, which is also why it's really important to get in a lot of practice before you fly in a public space. Prop guards are gonna save you from a lot of close calls if you bump into a branch or if you have a hard landing and the drone tips over. I also can't stress enough just to go slow when you're filming. Not only is it gonna be safer, but it's gonna make the footage look a lot more cinematic. Also, obviously don't fly over crowds or other people. Keep the drone off to the side and not directly above them. If you think you're gonna be using your drone regularly with your work, you may wanna look at obtaining aviation insurance. This is gonna cover you in case of a major accident and also general business liability insurance does not cover drone use. There's still a lot more information about drones that I didn't cover. I encourage you guys to do some of your own research, but hopefully you found this introduction helpful. I'm gonna post links to a lot of things I mentioned on this video on Tuts Plus. And make sure you stay tuned because we're gonna be releasing more drone-related tutorials soon. I'm Charles Jager for Tuts Plus.